an influx of home buyers since the beginning of the pandemic, and many are just discovering that our state is full of riches. Breweries and wineries, antique trails and flea markets, world-class museums, and of course, our world-famous pizza. In summer 2021 and beyond, Connecticut is going to need to flex its strengths to help make up for 2020 and lay the foundation for growth in the future. Christine Castingway, the tourism director for the state, joins us today to talk about getting people to say yes to Connecticut. We'd like to thank our premier sponsor, Digital Back Office, Palo Alto Networks. Check them out at digitalbackoffice.com or paloaltonetworks.com. The Municipal Voice is the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities podcast in collaboration with WHH LP 103.5 FM. I'm your host, Matt Ford. As always, be sure to give us a like and let us know what you're thinking in the comments. CCM's Municipal Voice podcast continues to present a key forum on important state local issues. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the consensus views of CCM or member municipal leaders. Christine, thanks for being here today. Thank you so much, Matt. Nice to meet you. So this is kind of an exciting episode for us. Uh, we are officially now into summer here in Connecticut. Yeah, um, and we get to talk about what makes our home state so great. Um, but we also have some strong competition in New England from states like Massachusetts, you know, they've got Cape Cod, Maine is, you know, vacation land. Um, but recently in Connecticut, we started a campaign called Say Yes to Connecticut. So can you tell me a little bit about Say Yes to Connecticut, kind of what's the elevator pitch for Connecticut? Okay, absolutely. I am so excited to be here today. Um, for those that don't know, I am the interim tourism director here with uh, DECD. But I, a um, little bit of background, I've been with DCD for 10 years, uh, supporting um, marketing and branding. Um, <clears throat> so very close to everything that mm -hmm. has been going on. And certainly coming out of a pandemic and gearing mm -hmm. up for summer um, was really a great opportunity to make sure that Connecticut is at the forefront mm -hmm. and that our residents and visitors really understand what makes us so special in that everything is so close to each other. It's mm -hmm. our proximity message that really um, provides ample opportunity for everybody to travel less and enjoy more. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, as we started to look forward to this summer especially, we had a lot of propri proprietary research going into this, mm -hmm. really trying to understand the mindset of where our residents and visitors are. And after a year of having to say no to so much, Mm -hmm. I think we were all so excited to be able to say yes. Um, so that's really where the Say Yes to Connecticut mm -hmm. campaign was born out of research and certainly looking at everything that's been going on around us and really the opportunity to now promote Connecticut um, in, the, in this new light as we all reemerge from the last year. Excellent. Well, I certainly today would want to focus on a lot of the positives and looking forward to the good stuff. But as you mentioned, we did have, you know, we're still getting out of a pandemic. Um, and last year was very rough, especially in uh, tourism. How, how bad was last year for Connecticut? And how did Connecticut fare kind of in relation to other states, other places? Yeah, so last year absolutely was um, a, a challenging year for tourism and hospitality nationwide, mm -hmm. uh, including Connecticut. So, so again, the tourism industry uh, really encompasses everything from museums to restaurants to arts and culture to accommodations to attractions to our state parks and beaches to our farms so you could just imagine uh the total impact to an industry that is 15.5 billion dollars to connecticut that that's some big numbers that's not small big numbers yes yeah. matt and 2.2 .2 in tax revenue and to support all of those sectors i just touched upon that encompass tourism Mm -hmm. They provide over 123,000 jobs to our state residents. So when all of that was rolled back, you can certainly understand the impact. And mm -hmm. some of our key economic indicators were following suit in that when we looked at lodging occupancy, for example, mm -hmm. we were down 30 to 50 percent, again, right alongside our neighboring states. Um, but, but this year, as we look forward, there's so many reasons to be optimistic. I mentioned mm -hmm. that research that we did, and certainly our, our question to folks was, 
once you are vaccinated, how likely are you going to be um, getting out and exploring? Mm -hmm. And we had almost 60% say, yes, once I am vaccinated, I am going to be out enjoying tourism activities. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing to note is people also were indicating they wanted to stay within 100 miles of home. Okay. So that told us, yes, we do want to get out and explore, but we're still going to be a little cautious to some mm -hmm. degree. Um, and we may not be returning completely to our normal travel habits. Mm -hmm. which is actually a great opportunity for Connecticut because yeah. there are so many areas within 100 miles of us that mm -hmm. could really enjoy the tourism product that Connecticut offers. Yeah, so, I mean, it sounds like with 100 miles, that's, you know, this year maybe the, the international tourists, which is, I don't know if it's ever a huge part of Connecticut's mix, but it's going to be less, but <clears throat> New York, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, or even within the state itself, is Absolutely. within 100 miles. So it sounds like in some ways, you know, it's not just about the family vacation where you take off for a week and whatever, but can also be about the visitation, the, the day trip, the weekend, that sort of thing. Yes. So we're seeing so much road travel. Um, mm -hmm. If anyone's been out on the highways and the interstates, there's a, there are a lot of families taking to the road. You're seeing those mm -hmm. RVs. Um, the reason we're also very optimistic for this season is we are getting reports that bookings are up. They mm -hmm. are up at our lodging, uh, you know, everything from family resorts to B&Bs to inns to campgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, and we're actually getting to the point where we're having to advise visitors to plan ahead. Definitely make those reservations. Um, it and, might already be full. Yes, yes. Okay. But again, that, that, is, that is great news for the tourism industry as a whole. One big aspect in Connecticut has been historically and still is um, the shoreline, certainly, and also uh, the casinos mm -hmm. is a big part of Connecticut's draw from across the borders and stuff. Um, how, how much did you, your department, work with the casinos during the pandemic? Um, you know, because they're, they're big areas and they're open now. So, you know, how much did you work with them on safety things? And, you know, why do you, you know, do you think, and if so, why that it's time for people to, you know, venture back to some of these bigger attractions? Yeah, so Connecticut was really leading the charge um, in terms of safety measures. Mm -hmm. And that is what brought us to the point where all restrictions were lifted on mm -hmm. May 19th. Um, we were one of the first in our region to really get to that point and have such positive vaccination numbers. And that was really under the leadership of our governor. It was partnering with our Department of Health and also our industry partners, like you're mentioning, you know, whether they were the casinos or our attractions or our accommodations. Yeah. I think um, our industry leaders here in uh, Connecticut absolutely were creative and they pivoted mm -hmm. and they were innovative on continuing to provide services um, and also leisure opportunities to our residents throughout the last year. So say, for example, <clears throat> if a restaurant was no longer able to have in-house dining mm -hmm. and they never had, you know, takeout or to go, they were able to design some curbside options. Yeah. We also had a lot of um, museums and art galleries and different attractions that may at one point not be able to welcome guests in but then they created a virtual mm -hmm. experience to keep that connection with their membership and with their visitors. Um, and again, you, you know, talking about accommodations, I think communicating the, the cleaning protocols that were in place, mm -hmm. the social distancing, the mask wearing, the sanitation, um, but also a lot of the automated options. So mm -hmm. checking into your lodging facility um, via mobile phone right, okay. or purchasing tickets online, you know, really cutting down on those touch points mm -hmm. um, is also what brought us here. So we are so proud of our tourism industry, but we're also very proud of our residents um, to be at this point and to be able to enjoy a safe summer here in Connecticut. Excellent. Yeah, summer is going to be good. And, you know, looking to the fall, I, I mentioned the casinos a little bit before, but um, we last year had to cancel our convention, our CCM convention that we hold at the convention center. Uh, we were planning to hold it at the Mohegan and this year we are going to be able to hold it. So, you know, that's exciting. How, how big a part are things like the convention centers and, and that sort of aspect, not the individual families, but 
tourism and that sort of visitation for business? Yeah, so certainly, you know, first and foremost, we're seeing a return of leisure travel and business travel is starting to pick up. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see a lot of events, like you're mentioning, your, your own conference coming back on the calendar. And, and that's a positive sign. And I think um, even beyond business travel, we're starting to see some of those fairs return, those country mm. fairs. We're starting to see outdoor music festivals um, and also some indoor uh, theater, you know, coming back online. And, mm -hmm. and that really feels so good uh, as a Connecticut resident. Um, and, and then likewise, I, I think we're also just continuing that safety measurement. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think folks are going to continue some of those practices as mm -hmm. we move ahead. Um, there was such a pent up demand. Uh, everyone is anxious in some regard to get back to a little bit of normalcy. Mm -hmm. And I think over the next six to 12 months, we're going to see a lot more, um, you know, coming back on our calendar and some of the events that we've mm -hmm. cherished and, and been part of a, a yearly tradition. Um, it's going to be really refreshing to get those those back on our calendars. Yeah, I'm certainly looking forward to going to some fairs this summer myself. You know, I, I always appreciate a good, you know, tractor pull or two. <laughs> um, Connecticut, we have some very well-known attractions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've got the shoreline, we've got museums and stuff. But just as, as the person in charge of tourism for the state, what's something fun and interesting that people might not think of in the northeast corner of our state? Well, in the northeast corner, uh, certainly what Connecticut is known for is mm -hmm. our small towns. People, when they go on ctvisit.com, one of the top searches is small town, believe it mm -hmm. or not. So Pomfret has a wonderful downtown area mm -hmm. um, that it's offers a Yes, it is. And it's just such a nice, relaxing area to walk mm -hmm. around visit a local eatery, um, you know, go to a local inn or bed and breakfast, spend the night. Uh, there's ample opportunity to go hiking and biking. I really think um, it beholds a lot of the beauty that the state has to offer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, with the Say Yes to Connecticut campaign, it's really been about rediscovery, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think as we've all reemerged, it's just like, you know, staying within our own borders, there's so much to see and do that could be very different from what's in your region. So go mm -hmm. visit a neighboring region, region and discover what Connecticut has to offer you. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like, you know, the pandemic did encourage a lot of people maybe in New York and some of the larger cities to come out and, you know, in some cases get summer homes, but also just uh, Airbnb and stuff in smaller places where they wanted to explore outside. Um, have you seen, you said, you know, you've been with the department for a while. Has mm -hmm. things like Airbnb and that sort of thing changed a little bit of the business? You know, that you don't have to be the large attraction with a big hotel, but, you know, you can find a cabin in the small town and that sort of thing. Has it sort of changed the, the industry in, in some ways like that? Well, like, as you said, Matt, Airbnbs have been around now for several years. So they've yeah. been part, part of the fabric of Connecticut's um, offerings. And mm -hmm. I think you're going to continue to see a mix as people start to emerge and travel. We're going to have folks, there's a lot of families right now that are trying to reconnect multi-generational families and they're gravitating towards that resort experience. Mm -hmm. um, but you certainly have, you know, folks that might just be cautiously reemerging and to your point, may want to have that more private experience and may mm -hmm. seek out whether it's an Airbnb or a quiet bed and breakfast or an inn. And I think the great thing about Connecticut's hospitality industry is that we have something for everyone. Uh, which is great. It's, it, you know, it's, it's sort of one size fits all, but it's like the, the one size fits all is so many different types of offerings. If we've learned anything in recent years, it's that, you know, you can't always plan for everything. So how do you stay flexible? <laughs> 
So I think this last year taught all of us just how flexible we are. Yeah. Um, you know, I use that word pivot, which I know so many of us have had to do in the mm -hmm. last year. And I think it's, it's being able to always look at your marketing plan and your media plan and figuring out how you to make those adjustments. Mm -hmm. But it's also coming up with creative and unique programs. Um, so part of Connecticut, again, as we were reopening and restrictions mm -hmm. were getting lifted, um, the Connecticut uh, Office of Tourism, along with the, the Office of the Governor, along with the Connecticut Restaurant Association, we kicked off a unique program called Connecticut Drinks on Us. Okay. So this was a combination of let's get out and support our local restaurants as restrictions were getting lifted. Um, but let's also recognize those folks that were continuing to be safe and get vaccinated. Um, so this year, there's a lot of unique marketing messaging going on. Um, in addition, there's another program, uh, Connecticut uh, Summer Fun on Us. And that's also about going out to attractions that are offering maybe a vaccination clinic. So, you know, I think it was two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, up at the Stafford Motor Speedway, you were able to go up there, um, take in a race, get a vaccine, and they gave you a, a free refreshment as well. And we're going to continue to see a lot of these unique offerings, I think, throughout the summer. And it's fantastic. If it helps to, to make people safe, if it helps to make people more comfortable getting out and enjoying all Connecticut has to offer, um, we are going to support that and we're going to continue um, to provide unique messaging and flexibility as, as we move forward. Again, I think the, the breadth and depth of tourism um, is really uh, important for folks to understand. Mm -hmm. We need to support our local restaurants, get people back in the restaurants or on the patios dining. Mm -hmm. we Want folks like to go to Pomfret or small towns and walk the main street and the town green, shop at the local boutiques, um, go to the local coffee shop, y you know, go to those local attractions um, mm -hmm. and, and really continue to support the economic recovery here in Connecticut. That, that is really, at the end of the day, what we're all trying to do. You mentioned some things like, you know, expanding the, the patio dining for some of these restaurants and stuff. Um, are there things that were done for the pandemic that you see sticking around long after the pandemic and possibly some good things, you know, um, trends as it were that are going to stick around? Like, are we always going to have, you think, more outdoor dining now than we did before? Absolutely. I think, I think that is definitely a positive outcome. Outdoor dining, I think um, more curbside options for folks that are on the go. Um, mm -hmm. They will continue to be offered, I'm, I'm sure. I think also, though, a lot of those automated ticketing processes I talked mm -hmm. about early on, I think the last year taught us all not only how to Zoom, but how to maybe offer our product or services online to yeah. streamline reservations, to streamline those in-person ticket window uh, mm -hmm. lines as well. So I think those are some of the unique benefits that when we look back maybe a year from now, um, you know, and we're going to say, wow, you know, that really did sort of nudge us in a direction yeah. that has helped operations. Um, and I think some of us are going to continue to keep a little bit of social distance over the coming months. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to see those hand sanitizer stations. Um, you're going to continue to see even maybe some plexiglass at certain windows, and that's okay. And kind of related to that is for some of these things to happen, obviously some um, rules had to get changed. Are there, is there anything that you see possibly happening in the legislature in the future that could help uh, tourism in the state or help restaurants? Yeah, so we just wrapped, as you know, our, our session for the mm -hmm. most part for this year and certainly um, assisting the restaurants w was part of it. I mm -hmm. think um, it's a little soon to tell what will come on the docket for, mm -hmm. for the next session. Um, yeah. Were there any on this know, session that, that you thought were important for the tourism industry that, that really did? 
land yeah. and, and where they're supposed to? Yeah. Yeah. So certainly, like you, you're saying, the the restaurants and I think it was the zoning for the outdoor dining mm -hmm. um, was, was made a little bit more flexible so that more restaurants were able to offer that. Mm -hmm. um, so again, speaking of positive outcomes, that is certainly one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also speaking to, you know, your pivoting and how this year people are saying they want to say, you know, within 100 miles. Do you anticipate that changing, you know, for the following summer? And how far out do you do you plan some of these efforts? You know, do you, two years from now, do you think, you know, you're going to be pushing international visitors or something? Like, how, how does that all work? Yeah, so again, we do a lot of research um, mm -hmm. frequently throughout the year, and we're going to be tracking all of these key indicators and really trying to understand the traveler sentiment mm -hmm. and, and their comfort level with returning to certain types of activities. I think as the vaccine rollout continues and as people start to reemerge, I, I think it's going to be somewhat of a gradual process, you know, mm -hmm. six, 12, 18, 24 months, we're just going to have to keep an eye on all that and adjust as, as needed. Um, like you mentioned, we've always marketed uh, to folks in our state, but also mm -hmm. the surrounding states. So as we continue to, to, to shift, we'll continue to look at our media and our target market and all of that um, in the coming months and even years. Obviously, you think a lot about these sort of things. You study what's going on here, other states. What do you see as some fun new trends and activities that are, are kind of rising in the tourist industry? Yeah, so certainly last summer and continuing into this summer is that need to be outdoors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we um, all rediscovered our hiking shoes, which was great. Yep. We dusted off our bikes and I all that. I found some lovely state parks I had not visited previously. Absolutely. So, um, and, and I think Connecticut is recognizing that in several ways. So, for example, you mentioned state parks and beaches. They mm -hmm. are free to all Connecticut residents. Um, new this year, DOT is also supplying transportation options to help folks get to those properties oh, and enjoy those. Cool. Yeah, so I really think, um, so it, Department, of Edu uh, Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. it's called uh, Park Connect, so okay. folks should definitely take a look at that. And then there's al also Weekend Wheels. Okay. So these are helping to get Connecticut residents to state parks and beaches, but also mm -hmm. to key attractions. Okay. So um, ag again, I think it's getting out of our own backyard, mm -hmm. outdoor attractions, certainly um, some some of the unique offerings, for example, mm -hmm. down in Old Line, you can go paddle boarding at Black Hall Outfitters, or you can go okay. to Brownstone Discovery Park in Portland and do cliff jumping. And then, yeah, yes, absolutely. And I think folks are just starting to open their eyes and rediscover some of these unique thrill-seeking opportunities. Yeah. You have the um, the rail bikes at Essex Steam Train that you can do, um, yes. What, what is a, tell me, what is a rail bike? A rail bike is, um, it, it travels on the train tracks, essentially, okay. and it is pedaled by the folks in the bike. Okay. And you can have a two-person or a four-person um, rail bike. And, okay. and if um, you're familiar with uh, the Essex um, train and steamboat, that mm -hmm. travels right along the Connecticut River, so it's okay. absolutely beautiful as well. So it's on the uh, the steam trains track. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Not not the Amtrak track. No. No. Okay. So um, I, I, again, just a lot of unique outdoor offerings. I think um, you know, river river tubing down in Farmington. A lot of water based outdoor activities mm -hmm. um, are going going to continue to be very popular. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that and that's natural, right? Everyone wants to be outside. It's summer, um, and and I think that uh, what we all learned last year is we have a lot of great natural resources right here in Connecticut. There's also just taking in the natural beauty. Whether you're going to try a local vineyard with some of the most amazing sunsets. Mm -hmm. um, there is also the pick your own, which is extremely popular here in Connecticut. Yeah. 
some folks only think of apples and pumpkins, but a lot of our Connecticut farms, the pick your own for summertime include strawberries and then peaches, you know, yeah. we always, you know, joke around that every fruit has its season. So mm -hmm. um, again, just uh, giving back and, and recognizing our local agriculture, I think is so yeah. important as Connecticut residents. So apple picking and hay rides are, are back for this fall. You mentioned briefly before the, the, the ride program. Can we talk a little bit more about that with the DOT? Um, specifically, they're, so are they pro they're providing bus service to some of these attractions into the state parks from, I'm guessing, from city centers? Or how does that work? Yeah, so I, I would highly recommend everyone to visit the CT Transit uh, website. I, okay, I don't I'll have put that all right the here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have all the information, unfortunately, at my fingertips. But there is the Park Connect program, and then mm -hmm. there is the Weekend Wheels. Mm -hmm. So those are the two transportation offerings, which, again, is for our Connecticut residents and really making it hopefully easier for them to get out and enjoy all there is to see and do here in Connecticut this summer. Excellent. Yeah, access is always important. Um, I know one thing we talk about a lot when we talk to local leaders about development in their towns is they, they talk about transit-oriented development. Does transit-oriented development kind of play into some of your stuff? You know, having the attraction near the train station with the good walkable cityscape to it. Is, is, is that something you pay attention to and market towards? Absolutely. I think folks want to visit a place that is easy to take it all in. So we're mm. always looking at connecting those dots. For example, if you're on ctvisit.com and say you're looking up an attraction or you're looking at the accommodation that you might have booked a reservation at. We have a feature on the website which is called while you're in the neighborhood oh, and okay. it does exactly that Matt. It's going to tell you what is the restaurant that is near you, what is the additional attraction or art museum or or trail if you're interested in antiques, you know, what could you find on the antiques trail or the beer trail or the pizza trail? We have so mm -hmm. many trails. Yeah. Um, so, so really trying to make sure you're enjoying everything there is to do in the area in which you're visiting. Um, but the other important thing, again, about Connecticut is this proximity. Mm -hmm. So you could essentially have an accommodation down on the shoreline, but in a short drive, go on an amazing hike over at Sleeping Giant, for example, uh, State Park. Um, so, so really cross-promoting everything there is in Connecticut, but also providing the ease of doing so. And, and ctvisit.com has really proven to be a great resource because it, it helps our, our visitors and our residents understand all there is to see and do, but also maybe some travel deals that are available mm. or events like we were talking about. If you know you're coming into an area or visiting an area at a certain point in time, you may want to take in a local, you know, music on the green, for example, or something like that. So um, again, it's, it's just planning and, and taking a look around once you get there. The other important thing for Connecticut this summer is our welcome centers have reopened. Okay. So we have five welcome centers um, mm -hmm. here in Connecticut, and those are all reopened with staff. So we have folks in those centers able to help visitors with any questions that they mm -hmm. may have on the go. Those, those five, that's, is that 95, 84, 91? Like how, how are those distributed? Yeah, so it's in um, North Stonington, West Willington, Westbrook, Danbury, and Darien. Okay, so kind of near those border areas where people are coming in. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, you mentioned uh, some of the trails, specifically the pizza trail. So I am, <laughs> I am gonna put you on the spot now. Oh. What's your favorite pizza place and what's your favorite topping? Okay, this may be a little boring. This will be controversial. We'll, we'll I see. know, it's so hard, it's so hard. I, um, you know, I would have to say, it, it's a toss up for me, maybe with uh, Sally's and Peppy's down in mm -hmm. New Haven. Um, but I'm, I'm a little bit basic when it comes to my topping. I just like a classic cheese pizza um, and maybe with a little pepperoni or mm -hmm. uh, peppers, but uh, nothing too exotic. <laughs> nothing too exotic. So Sally's or, Sally's or Peppy's for something with a little bit of moots, as we <laughs> like to say down here. Yeah. 
Well, Christine, thank you so much for speaking with us today. And uh, I kind of want to go out and uh, explore Connecticut now. Absolutely. We hope you do. We hope everybody in Connecticut says, say yes to Connecticut, get out and enjoy and have some fun and, and really, you know, take advantage of all there is to see and do here in Connecticut and help reinvigorate our local economy and, and, and just really have fun. I'd like to thank our guest, Christine Castingway. I'd like to thank our premier sponsors, Digital Back Office, Palo Alto Networks, who you can check out at digitalbackoffice.com and paloaltonetworks.com. The Municipal Voice is a co-production by CCM and WNHH 103.5 FM. Kevin Maloney is our executive producer, Christopher Gilson is our producer, Harry Draws is on the boards, and I'm Matt Ford, your host. Be sure to check out our Facebook page and give us a like, and watch out for our CCM chat series on our YouTube page.